and welcome to First Christian Church. We are, as usual, about five minutes late. You know, that's how it rolls here. But welcome to all the new faces, to all the coming back and returning faces. We appreciate all of you. Let us take a breath, find our seats, and let us pray. God of wonder and delight and mystery, we are so grateful for you being in this place with us, offering us so much abundance, so much beauty, and such amazing friendship. We are, as always, grateful to be able to worship you in this place, in this community, with all of our hearts. Help us to keep in mind those who can't be with us here today. Keep in mind those who are traveling, who are part of this church, those who have strayed and are not yet returned, and those who can no longer make it here. We hold them in our hearts just the same, and we know that you are with them as well. In your son's holy name, we pray. Amen. Let's see, Harry. So only one announcement today that I'm aware of, unless others have more, but the big announcement is just a reminder, we will not be having worship here on Sunday next week. We will be meeting here and going to Cane Ridge. So if anyone needs a ride, please make sure your name is on the list out there. We are going to meet here and take a trip over to help them celebrate 40 years of Cane Ridge West. For those who don't know, that's our church camp up by Lincoln, Montana. If you've never been, it's worth going to see. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, big old log cabins, things like that in a beautiful area. So reminder, if you need a ride, definitely let us know outside there. And we will be picking people up here. Any questions, any other announcements? Barb. What time do you leave and get back? I don't know that we've decided that yet. Um, my understanding, and I have to confirm that worship will be at 10. Um, so we'll most likely meet here about eight, just to give us some time and 
to be and get settled. And then once worship is over, they'll have a little lunch and then we'll be headed back. So early afternoon, we should be back. Um, it depends on who your driver is and you know what arrangements that we make with them. So um, right now um, I'm the driver. So unless others are going and, and transporting people. So keep me posted. Um, we'll connect with each other as the week goes on. But we're excited to go up and enjoy that space again. With no other announcements, let's sing a little more. I am Wait stranger trying to discern We can be kind, we can be living by giving and loving all the time. So on the days when it's feeling tough, and it seems like you don't have enough, well, let's be thankful for our friends and family and grateful for the air that we breathe and appreciate everything that we have today. Let's be generous to anyone who has less than us. It's good to be compassionate ever since the day you were born. Yeah, got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for. Everybody gets the land and everybody gets the sun. So everybody lend a hand 
the girl was in me. It's making me nice, making all shit. We can keep growing together, it's better when everyone cares. So on the days when it's feeling tough, and it seems like you don't have enough, let's be thankful for our friends and family and grateful for the air that we breathe and appreciate everything that we have today. Let's be generous to anyone who has less than us. It's good to be compassionate ever since the day you were born. Yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for. So, be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Thank you for the job. I am thankful for my boy. Thank you for my teacher. I am thankful for my house. I'm thankful for the earth. So on the days when it's feeling tough, and it seems like you don't have enough, let's be for our friends and family and grateful for the air that we breathe and appreciate everything that we have today. Let's be generous to anyone who has less than us. It's good to be compassionate ever since the day you were born. Yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for. Good morning. It's really nice to see some new faces here. Um, I am Maggie. I'm one of the elders of our church. And it's, it's a beautiful day. Our scripture today is from Ruth, and we've been having Ruth pretty much all month, and it's been, it's wonderful. Um, it's Ruth 4, verses 9 through 17. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, today you are witnesses that I am acquiring all that belong to Amalekite and all that belong to Chil. Chilean and Malon from the hand of Naomi. Also, Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Malon, and I am acquiring for myself as a wife to maintain the dead man's name on his inheritance, to reestablish the name of the deceased on his heritable property, that it may not be cut off from his kin and from the gate of his native place. Today, you are witnesses. All the women and men who were at the gate, along with the elders, said, We are witnesses. May the faithful God grant that the woman who is coming into your house be like Rachel and Leah. The two of them built up the house of Israel. May you prosper in Erephath and establish a lineage in Bethlehem. And may your house, through the children that the bount of life will give you by this young woman, be like the house of Perez, whose, whom Tamar had given birth to for Judah. So Boaz took Ruth as his own wife. He, be, he came to her, and the source of life granted her a pregnancy, and she gave birth to a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the faithful God, who has not deprived you this day of next of kin. And may the child's name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a provider in your latter years. For your daughter-in-law has given birth to him, she who loves you, she who is more to you than seven sons. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom, and she fostered him. The neighbor women gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. And he became father of Jesse, 
the father of David. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. Sure, you can do it, please. Okay. Two bunny ears, loop around and pull together. Got it? Don't be him. James, I want you to pick an artwork you like and tell me about it. Art is a wonderful thing and I want to enjoy it with you, okay? For towers, a terrifying scene of war. Thousands of forces who break across the ground in the cavalry. Watching blood red near force, blood with lava, and fields for some twist. Some blood, military bugles, all the threads that burst, no people crying. Mighty silver blades are being started above their heads. Leading with gun, a command on a mighty white stallion. The beast eyes were wide and ferocious. The rest were rain, tossing through a skin. The commander was the steed high, his face blazing with heroism, but still in his eyes, a glimmer of fear. For at the front line, survival is not guaranteed. Can you describe that one to us over there? Yeah, that's all right. We'll skip it. Um, so the other video was a a drummer, and he talks about um, being a kid in school, and he's always tapping around at school. And of course, what does he get? He gets in trouble, right? Little kid making all the noise, can't sit still. Gets sent to the principal's office. Principal tells him, try sitting on your hands. So he says, I tried sitting on my hands. That lasted about five seconds. And then one day he had this teacher, Mr. Jensen. And he said, Mr. Jensen, he was tapping away. And Mr. Jensen said, stay after class. And he's like, well, here we go. I'm in trouble again. But after class, Mr. Jensen came to him and said, come up to my desk. And so the little boy goes up to the desk and Mr. Jensen looks at him and says, you're not in trouble. Okay. 
He said, have you ever thought about playing the drums? And he gives him his first set of drumsticks. Needless to say, that young man grows up and is a very well-renowned drummer to this day because someone took the chance to see from a different perspective. So what does that all have to do with Ruth? Well, you'll find out later on in this message, but both of those videos for me exemplify some piece in this story. We've been taking a journey for the last few weeks through the book of Ruth, which is the story of a young woman who decides to journey on with her mother-in-law to a place not her own. A young woman who loves her mother-in-law so much that she will do anything she can to ensure that Naomi is cared for, even despite Naomi's bitterness. We witness as these two return to Naomi's homeland and Ruth eventually encounters Boaz. And under Naomi's urging and guidance, Ruth reminds Boaz of his patriarchal familial obligation. Essentially, she calls him out for not stepping up more quickly. And the story gets a little racy. We will never know what happened or didn't happen on that threshing floor. But whatever the experience was, it was enough to convince Boaz that he needed to make good on his promises. This week, we see Boaz lay claim to Ruth and her inheritance and to fulfilling the duties of a male relative to see that the family name continues on. This is done in front of a crowd of witnesses, and those witnesses then offer a blessing on this marriage. And on face, these blessings, they sound very traditional. Blessing on the potency of the marriage, right? Be fruitful, bear many children. That they will prosper, do well together, and that they will have a, an established lineage. And of course, that their children are also successful. Sounds pretty traditional. But to those who are familiar with the stories of Rachel and Leah and Tamar, this blessing also carries some irony. See, these women play such a vital role in Israel's history. And as Kathleen Farmer suggests, we, these women, they were all remembered as tricksters whose deceptions had reproductive consequences. Through their deceptions, these women ensured the continuity of the family line. So the witnesses are focused, as many of us would be, on Boaz as a worthy man doing the right thing in taking Ruth as his wife. Boaz comes to Ruth and he consummates their marriage, and by God's grace, they are blessed with a child. The value of the son is to carry on the family name. Maybe this is silly, but when I watch that first little video, that little boy who's at first so reluctant to be at the art gallery with his blind mother, I thought of Ruth and Naomi. Naomi, reluctant and bitter at returning to her homeland without a namesake. And Ruth, whose love was so deep and so faithful, just like that blind mother offering the little boy a chance for redemption. And of course, the crowd of witnesses who delight in the experience, a little community of hope born out of a moment of faith. And the second video, which I apologize, you didn't get to see, but a single person's impact, this teacher's impact, simply by taking a different perspective, instead of seeing a problem with this little boy's behavior, saw the potential gift this child had to offer the world. Seeing a drummer, 
instead of a problem child. There's so much more to the story of Ruth. The women of Bethlehem, they refuse to be limited by the statement made by the witnesses. They refuse to be limited and see the son's value only in being the lineage. Instead, the women of Bethlehem say that the son is to be valued because of his mother. A mother who loved so deeply that love restored Naomi. Again, if we listen deeply, we see the great reversal of things. Naomi, who is essentially a remnant of her family line, left without recourse to continue on her family. She's loved so deeply by her daughter-in-law that through Ruth, she finds herself with a son who's able to pick up the family line again and carry it on. What an incredible message of hope. In this post-exile time of bitterness and emptiness, a time when Ezra and Nehemiah are trying to cast out foreigners, a time of doubting God's presence in their lives. A time not all that different from our own today. A time of strife and conflict over who we would deem foreigner. Insiders versus outsiders. Rifts growing larger and doubts growing deeper. And yet here it is, a foreign woman calling out the righteous man to step up and do what he has obligation for. A foreign woman graced by God to bear a son that both redeems Naomi and through the line of the Davidic kings leads to our redemption as well. It is precisely those whom we would cast as outsider, as other, as margin, that become an essential part of the Lord's plan for redemption. No matter how you feel about the actions of Rachel, Leah, Tamar, and now Ruth, they did what they needed to do to survive and to ensure that the community carried on. These women ensured that the lineage we put our faith in could come to fruition, that our Messiah could be born. Community isn't about surrounding ourselves with people who think and act like we do, but about embracing all of the differences that make us unique and seeking out the gifts that we each have that can bring us together. Community is about holding each other accountable while lifting each other up. Community is about embracing the outsider and creating a space of welcome and inclusion. And sometimes community is simply taking a chance and being heard or taking a slightly different perspective, seeing a problem as an opportunity and trouble as a gift. As I've been doing for the last few weeks, I'm going to leave you with a rendering of Psalm 107, verses one through three, which say, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those God redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3. And Leighton E. Williams rewrites that as a poem called Hard Hope. It's harder than it used to be for me to imagine all of us gathering a drawing together from the far off edges of the world. These days, it feels so much more like a scattering, a shattering, a graveyard of broken relationships and walls built to keep us apart. What God has joined together in love, let no one tear asunder. We are trying so hard. 
It's harder than it used to be to imagine redemption, a world made better, a humanity unfettered by brokenness, bigotry, fear, and despair. It's harder than it used to be to believe that you are there. But it's easier to believe that I'm wrong. We are so often wrong. Please let me be wrong. Leighton Williams. When you're ready, Terry. We started that as a little tradition and it's growing. I think most people, if we didn't sing it, would be a little disappointed. It's become a regular little event for us. Um, and I have heard that Brad and Barb's granddaughter will sing it at home. So we're definitely uh, having an impact on that little one. As we prepare for our time of prayers for the people, I will, as always, open us in prayer and leave space for you to name aloud the joys and concerns of your heart. And I do encourage you to use your voice. God knows what's written there. We don't necessarily. Help us share it. And then we close with the Our Father. Let us pray. Gracious God, you offer us so much abundance, beauty of creation, the love of family and friends, and even the love of strangers. Help us to always reach out, to see beyond those initial assumptions we might make, to see you in the faces we meet, to see where we can best help live out the plans that you have for us. Be the hands and feet in this world that show your love to others. For what and for whom do we pray today? 
Prayers for friends and family of an individual at Touchmark who passed away, and for all those who reside in that space. All the children and teachers going back to school. Prayers for all the teachers and children going back to school. Prayers for my friend Brandy who has a lot of health challenges. Prayer for a friend Brandy and health challenges, and all those who struggle under those circumstances. For recovery from alcoholism. Now for prayers for this earth and this creation that we live upon. May we heal with her. May we learn how to better support and utilize all of the gifts we've been given. May we recognize our abundance and care for our abundance. Holy One, we offer up these petitions to you. You know what's written in our hearts and you know that sometimes we lament and sometimes we celebrate and you are with us through it all. You give us both laughter and tears. And let us know that in both of these, we are okay. You give us courage, you give us support, and you give us grace. And we are grateful as we pray the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
The story of Ruth is one of hope. Ruth went to being a homeless widow, to being the mother of a son who would be part of the lineage of David, which led to Jesus. Hope is essential in our lives. We're living in dark times, in desperate, desperate need of hope. People are looking in the wrong direction, trying to relieve their despair and fear for the future. We come to this table to demonstrate our faith and our hope in our Lord, a hope that leads to a better life, an everlasting life. May we show others the way to the table. Please affirm with me that all are welcome at Christ's table. I find myself often wondering about that last hour. That last night when Jesus was much more. But to them, the simple bread that he offered and broke, he blessed it and he said, this is a body broken for you. This is new life shared with all people. And he took their table wine and he poured it and he blessed it and he said, this is blood spill. This is new hope poured out for all people. I don't think they quite understood it anymore. I do. Please pray with me. Dear Lord of mercy and love, as we eat the bread and drink of the cup today, may we be filled with the joy and the hope that knowing and loving you brings. Help us to recognize your helping hand of hope in all that we do, and may we be your hands in this hurting world. Amen. As you come forward, we do have bread, you are welcome to tear, we have juice, and if you need gluten free, we have gluten free. Everyone is welcome in this game. Please come and eat that.
Please pray with me. Lord, we present our gifts of offerings and talents to you for your blessing. May we experience the joy of giving and helping our less fortunate neighbors. In your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. As you move forward into your week, I encourage you to think about all the places you have community, what it means to be together in love and with grace. Amen. Mm -hmm.